knowledge about variation. Um, so if you have one takeaway from this, um, it's plot data over time. Um, and even if you don't learn about control limits and all of that kind of stuff, if you plot, if you learn to plot data over time and interpret things in that context, um, you can make far more informed decisions than you might otherwise. Um, the purpose of the control chart, the statistical control chart, um, it's it's a term. The term control chart is a little bit of a of a uh, an awkward term. Um, it's a term that was coined originally because uh, it part of its purpose was trying to achieve a state of statistically controlled variation, um, but it doesn't have that kind of intuitive meaning when you first hear the term, term control chart. The purpose of the control chart is to, to, uh, is to be able to distinguish between different kinds of variation. So in the, in the absence of a tool like this, um, what we're tempted to do is to explain all forms of variation. So I don't know whether any of you have had this this kind of an experience, but um, have you ever been asked uh, why things are, why the results today are better than they were yesterday, or why the results today are worse than the results were yesterday, or last week, or last month, or last quarter? Expl explanation of variances. It's a pretty common practice. Um, if we turn on the radio at the end of any weekday, we will dutifully hear the, the, uh, the journalists providing the explanations for why the stock market went up or down by a given amount today. Right? So explaining variances, um, if you want uh, guaranteed employment, um, is a, is a good, good area to go into because um, there will always be variation. Um, the question really for us is uh, whether or not in doing so, that we were doing something meaningful. We're doing something where it's likely to result in in uh, uh, genuine learning. For that reason, um, some some people have said that they would rather call the control chart a learning chart. Now, in this particular chart here, um, we see a series of results plotted, and uh, there is a, an upper control limit and a lower control limit. Um, those limits are calculated from the data. These aren't limits that come separately from what we would like to see or um, performance bounds for a process or something of that nature. These come from the nature of variation that's inherent in the data. And um, what, what we're aiming to do here is try and, try and determine when it makes sense to ask the question, what was special, what was different, what's going on, versus saying, hey, this is just variation, and variation happens. And that's what the, that's what the statistical control limits do for you. They give you that, that ability to, to know when it makes sense to ask that question. Um, and as we see in this particular run of data here. Um, this last point went outside the control limits. So it is a signal of special cause. For that particular point, it makes sense to ask the question, what was special? What was different about the conditions underlying the generation of this point of data versus the others? If we didn't have something like that, if all of the points were just varying within the control limits, um, then it doesn't make any sense, or it's, it's unlikely to be a productive exercise to be asking why one point is lower or higher than another in that series. That doesn't mean that there isn't anything to learn or that there isn't an ability to improve a system like that of statistically controlled variation. To the contrary, the, the improvement process is one where, first of all, um, we focus on the special causes of variation and learning 
um, about what's special about those underlying conditions, taking actions for improvement based upon that, and then hopefully bringing the process into a state of statistical control. Once we get it into a state of statistical control, then we move into a different kind of, kind of question. Now the question is, what's common to all of the underlying conditions here of all of, that generated all of these points? What's the underlying system that generated this? And what kinds of system changes might we make that could cause a, cause a change in the, the overall variability of these results? Um, when you do have a state of statistically controlled variation, in other words, all of the points fall within the statistical control limits, then the control limits provide a basis for prediction of future outcomes. In a case like this, where we have a signal of a special cause, we have no basis for prediction of future outcomes. No statistical basis for prediction. Um, because we don't know what it was that was special about the conditions that gave rise to that point. We don't know when that might have effect again at some point in the future, so we don't know what, um, what we're likely to see and when. If we've got variation that, that, is, um, that is stable, that is statistically controlled, staying within the control limits, then the control limits provide a a basis for prediction of the, the bounds of future outcomes with risk of being wrong. And that judgment is not a statistical judgment. It's a subject matter judgment. Um, that seems like kind of an odd thing, particularly for a statistician to say that it, yeah, it's not really statistics. It's really subject matter, right? But what is that judgment really about? Well. That judgment is, is saying, we think it's reasonable that the, to predict that the variability is going to stay within these bounds for continuation of the same conditions. So we've observed the process, observed the system, under a set of conditions. And if that conditions is continued into the future, then there's a reasonable basis to, to predict what the, the range of outcomes is going to be. Um, but that judgment is really a fundamentally a subject matter expertise judgment. And so that kind of brings us back into the, the whole area of theory of knowledge. We talked about ties between each of these areas, right? That, that uh, prediction is really based upon, based upon knowledge. Um, and so the focus should be on building knowledge for improvement to improve our ability to predict.